Beyond traditional indicators, CFAS as a measure of economic health in a debt-driven world. One, introduction. In modern economies, debt has become an integral force driving everything from home purchases and corporate growth to public infrastructure projects. Traditionally, economic health has been gauged by metrics like gross domestic product, GDP, consumer price index, CPI, and unemployment rates, which provide broad insights into national productivity and spending power. However, in debt-heavy environments, these indicators can miss a vital aspect, the sustainability of debt-financed investments. Cash flow after debt servicing, CFAS, offers a unique lens through which to evaluate economic health, specifically in economies where debt plays a central role. By measuring the cash flow available after meeting debt obligations, CFAS reveals whether an asset or investment can support its own financing sustainably. This commentary explores CFAS's potential as a complementary indicator, especially valuable in predicting when assets may be overvalued or debt may become unsustainable. Two, the mechanics of CFATS. CFAS is a financial metric representing the cash flow remaining after a company or asset has serviced its debt. Calculated by taking net operating cash flow and subtracting debt service obligations, CFAS reveals the true earning capacity of an asset or project once financing costs are accounted for. Understanding CFATS involves three main components. Net operating cash flow, cash generated from the primary activities of the asset or business. Debt principal repayment, the portion of debt that must be repaid, reflecting the financing burden. Interest expenses, the cost of servicing debt, which can vary widely depending on market conditions and interest rates. CFATS is particularly relevant in debt-driven environments because it shows whether an investment can stand independently after debt obligations. Traditional economic indicators, while informative, often do not account for this crucial dynamic. In essence, CFAS highlights financial health on a granular level, indicating whether assets are producing value beyond their debt burdens or are simply surviving on borrowed capital. Number three, economic health and debt sustainability. Debt has increasingly become a cornerstone of economic growth, driving sectors from real estate to corporate finance. When credit is abundant and interest rates are low, leveraging debt to fuel expansion seems viable. However, as interest rates rise and economic conditions shift, the burden of debt servicing intensifies, creating a need to reassess asset valuations and financing viability. A negative CFATS, indicating that an asset cannot cover its debt costs, often serves as a warning sign. It suggests that either the asset's revenue generation is insufficient or that the cost of debt has outpaced the value the asset can extract. In a housing market, for example, a negative CFADS could signal an overvalued property or region, pointing to unsustainable borrowing practices or inflated property prices. This indicator could thus preempt price corrections, as seen in cases where asset prices undergo abrupt adjustments to align with realistic financing capabilities. CFADS's relevance grows in economies heavily dependent on debt financing. In such environments, a positive CFAS across sectors suggests economic health and sustainable borrowing practices, while widespread negative CFATs might signal underlying stress in the financial system. This content is brought to you by Bobby Giggs. Promote your brand here and reach a wide audience across platforms like YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Follow the links in the description to get started. Four, case studies and real-world examples. Housing market in the southeastern U.S. Recent housing data from the southeast, including states like Georgia, Tennessee, and South Carolina, shows significant price corrections and rising inventory levels. This trend correlates with increasing debt service costs, particularly as mortgage rates climb. By examining CFATs across these regions, analysts could gain insights into asset sustainability, as negative CFATs might indicate overleveraged properties struggling to maintain financing. For example, homes in Atlanta have experienced notable price cuts as rising debt costs strain affordability. The increase in inventory levels also suggests that many homeowners or investors can no longer maintain their properties, forcing a market correction. CFADs can reveal whether these price cuts are isolated events or part of a broader trend, offering insights into the systemic health of the housing market. Corporate Debt and Infrastructure Projects 
In sectors such as corporate finance and infrastructure, CFAS can indicate whether projects are generating enough revenue to cover financing. A significant project with a persistently negative CFADS may require subsidies or restructuring, which could impact long-term viability. Such was the case with certain real estate developments in high-cost cities where rising interest rates squeeze CFATS margins and force companies to reassess project timelines or sell at a loss. Five, limitations and considerations. While CFATS provides valuable insights, it has limitations. One primary challenge is data availability, as CFATS figures can vary widely across sectors and regions. Unlike standardized metrics like GDP or CPI, CFATS often requires granular financial data, which may not be consistently available. Moreover, CFATS is not a standalone metric. It should be used alongside other indicators to form a comprehensive economic picture. For example, a negative CFATS might indicate a problematic asset, but pairing it with data on capital inflows or consumer demand could provide a fuller context, revealing whether the issue is isolated or systemic. Additionally, CFAS may vary by sector. In real estate, it's highly relevant as property values and rental income are sensitive to debt servicing costs. However, in industries with fluctuating cash flows or seasonal trends, interpreting CFAS can be more complex and may require adjustments to reflect sector-specific conditions. Six, conclusion. CFATS holds promise as an economic health indicator, particularly in economies where debt financing underpins growth. By focusing on post-debt service cash flow, CFATS adds a layer of insight that traditional indicators may miss, especially in identifying early signs of asset overvaluation or unsustainable financing practices. As debt-driven economies evolve, CFADS could gain traction as an indicator for predicting market shifts and assessing the stability of investments. Future research may focus on CFADS's applications across various asset classes, from housing to corporate finance, as well as its potential in economic forecasting. By integrating CFADS with established metrics, analysts and policymakers could obtain a richer understanding of economic health in today's complex financial landscape.